Hey everybody, welcome to the homestead. So we've gotten a lot of great feedback from a lot of the meat preservation videos that we have done where we showcase how to preserve meat the way people a long time ago used to do it. Uh, they didn't use uh, refrigeration, they didn't have lots of the chemical preservatives, and a lot of the packaging uh, technology that we have today in order to preserve food, they had to do it a different way, and they had to do it safely. So how did they do that? And so we've been showcasing a number of videos, you can see some of those videos in our archives, uh, but today we're going to talk about prosciutto. Um, this is going to be a venison prosciutto, and a lot of times this is made with pork, uh, so we don't really do pork here on the homestead. We harvest a lot of venison, a lot of, uh, we do uh, uh, sheep and uh, goats sometime. And, uh, but so venison is something that we definitely harvest on a regular basis uh, when it comes to deer season here on the homestead. It's something that we use to preserve and set up food for ourselves for the year. And so today I have two uh, venison uh, hams. This is the rear leg of, of a venison of a deer. And we went ahead and are going to cure these, salt cure these into a prosciutto, which means that they're going to be cured for about 30 days and then they're going to hang for almost a full year. They're going to hang for a full year. No refrigeration is going to be involved in this process, no chemical preservatives, uh, none of the fancy packaging material. We're going to do it just like they did back in the old days. So we're going to go ahead and continue with this process uh, and, and show you how it's done. Now these two pieces of meat have been uh, butchered uh, by me. We, did, we do all of our butchering, butchering here on the homestead and we've gone ahead and prepared these to be prosciutto. And so you see that the bone is in. This is the ball joint right there for the hip and uh, the bone is in and what we're going to do is begin the salting process and the curing process today. Now these things are going to go into um, our uh, cooler. It's about 20 degrees outside at night now and we're going to go ahead and uh, cure these for 30 days on salt and each day going out and pouring off the juices that is being extracted from the meat. And then after 30 days we're going to uh, smoke these in our smoker uh, for about a 24 hour period and then we're, they're going to hang inside of our pantry for anywhere up to a year. Nine months to a year, ten months to a year, but approximately a year's worth of curing and drying and aging uh, to be a, a full prosciutto. A real prosciutto uh, that's made with pork is usually hung for about a full year before it's really considered a, a real true prosciutto. So that's what we're going to do with this. A venison prosciutto from start to finish going to be a long process, so let's get started. Okay, so if you've watched any of our other videos, you know that we do not do any of the chemical preservatives, the nitrates, and the nitrates, a lot of the curing salts and curing sugars that are out there have all kinds of chemicals that just really aren't that great for you. I can't see that they're healthy for you. So instead, what they used to do back in the old days is they used to use two things. One of two things, uh, usually saltpeter, which is a mineral found in the ground, or they would use vegetable matter a lot of vegetables and plants have a natural occurring, a large amount of naturally occurring nitrates um, inside of them. And so what happens is you put these nitrates on the meat and over the time, uh, the process of the curing, they are drawn into the meat with the salt and they, uh, when they encounter bacteria, they begin to turn from nitrate into nitrite and thus preventing the bacteria that's in the meat uh, from growing. Things like botulism, uh, salt will not kill botulism. You have to have a nitrate uh, inside the meat to do that. And so that's what we use. We use celery powder. So if you watched any of our other videos when we talk about curing meats, we use celery powder. And so what we're going to do first, just take the celery powder, just go lightly over the meat, putting it all, covering it lightly but, you know, abundantly. Getting that in there. On the ends too. Make sure it's worked into all the crevices over all of the surface area of the meat. That's all. All you got to do. And uh, and that's going to be drawn in. And this is going to do a number of things. Not only it's going to it's going to prevent bacteria from growing inside of your meat, but it's also uh, going to preserve the color of the meat. Uh, it's going to be still a, a nice color red at the end of the curing process. 
Otherwise, you can, you can cure your meat just fine sometimes without this stuff. Chances of botulism in there are, are going to be small, but it's the 1% chance that could kill you. <laughs> so people use uh, nitrates, but if you uh, don't, uh, you won't preserve the color. And so that's also another reason people like to use nitrates. And I get that all over there. All right, so we're going to do that with both pieces of meat, just like that. Okay, so there's two pieces of meat that are ready and uh, good to go for salting. People have asked before, hey, Zach, why is your meat green, you know, either halfway during or after the curing process? And it's because we have celery powder on it. It's not green mold or anything, although having white, blue, or green mold on your aging pieces of, of venison or meat is not a bad thing. It's actually imparting flavor. It's the uh, penicillin type mold uh, that actually is um, really beneficial and it allows your meat to breathe and uh, protects the meat as it ages. In fact, here's a picture of, of a charcuterie in New York City. Um, uh, it just, it's a great, they say it's one of the best stores in New York City to buy uh, salami and take a look at their salamis hanging from the ceiling. They are covered in white, blue, and green mold. And so that's completely, totally normal. It actually provides flavor and it helps protect the meat during the aging process. So anyway, these two pieces are ready to go. We're going to go ahead and uh, I have a food uh, grade plastic container. I'm going to put the first piece of meat in, move this off to the side, move that over there so you can see that. And we're going to go ahead and take our salt and just start liberally covering. Then we're going to use a lot of salt. We want to start covering this piece of meat with a ton of salt. And every day, for the next least week or so, I'm going to take this piece of meat out and I'm going to turn it. I'm going to drain off the liquid that's come off because there's going to be a lot of liquid that comes off of this. And we're going to, again, just apply a, a layer of salt on it. Just like that. I'm going to cover this whole thing because there's a lot of moisture in here and the object of the salt is to pull the moisture out of the meat. At the same time, the meat through osmosis is pulling the salt in and that's killing a lot of things like listeria, any type of other types, lots of different types of bacteria that could be in there. It's uh, killing that as well, but it's also preserving the meat and giving it a flavor and um, just allowing it to be preserved. That's, that's the process of curing meat. So we've got all this covered like that with a good covering, just like that. And at the same time, the, the celery is being drawn into the meat through that osmosis process, just like that. And every day, this is going to be a process every day for at least a week until the majority of the moisture is out. And then uh, we're going to continue to let it age on salt for the full 30 days, um, 30 days total. Now, one thing we are going to show also is that once this is put out in my cooler like this, we're going to place a board on top of it or something, something on top of the meat and then a piece or a rock, something heavy or maybe a weight. If you have a dumbbell, if you have a weight set, you can take a weight and press it down. Now, what, why people do that and why you should do that is because there is a, an artery, a major artery that runs through this leg and there's a chance that it may have some blood in it. And you want to make sure you get that out of the leg so that it does not spoil. If you don't, there is a chance that it could spoil. And so um, very important that you put, press a weight on it. You'll see a lot of charcuteries and a lot of places that uh, make artisan meats. They will have their um, prosciuttos weighted down or being squished somehow in order to get all the moisture and, uh, and fluids out of uh, the piece of meat. So. There we go. Now that's the beginning of that process. Let's go ahead and start the other one. Okay, here goes our next one. And more salt all over the top of that. Spread that all out in there. All out, all over. Rub it in real deep. Get a good flip. Sides. All the parts, ins and outs.
So there you go. There is our two prosciuttos and uh, they are ready to go out and begin the curing process. We're going to keep them outside in a cooler. Again, it's getting about 20 degrees at night and 40 degrees during the day uh, from here on out in the winter time. And so this is a great time for them to cure outside in a cooler or protected area. And then every day, again, we're just going to pour the juices off and resalt them uh, to make sure they're always fully covered in salt and that that curing process is going the, the way it should. And so after 30 days, we will pull them out and they will go in the smoker um, for about 24 hours. And then after that, they're going to hang the rest of the time inside of our pantry for a full year. And we'll do another video when we get to that process, just so you can see it. But first, I thought it would be a good idea to show you the process of where we are in some of our other uh, artisan cured meats. And you can take a look. A couple of our artisan meats that we have cured so far, just a few of them, and uh, we have an entire pantry full of this kind of stuff and really looking forward to getting into it, but it's not quite ready yet. Let me give you a close up so I can show you what I mean. Now this salami right here has been curing for about six weeks. It's not done yet. I'm gonna let it cure for a minimum of about 10 weeks and then we'll go ahead and try it, but it's already rock hard. And uh, it seems like it's, it's exactly where it should be according to what I've seen other people do on, on YouTube and other blogs who are into uh, doing their own artisan meats. And so I'm really looking forward to uh, tasting this. When you come into the house and you go into our pantry, the smell is just unbelievable. It smells so good in there because of these and the other meats that we have. Uh, it just smells like a giant pepperoni. You just want to go in there and just eat something. But uh, we're going to have to wait. We've been holding back. We're not going to cut into these things until uh, the time is right. And we've had at least 10 weeks um, or longer to uh, be, have them age and cure and, and just be ready. So it's not ready yet, but it smells unbelievable. And I wish you could smell it. And I, I'm sure it's going to taste unbelievable as well. This here is one of our roast. Uh, this is from a leg of a venison, and we cured this uh, not too long ago, and uh, about I guess about three weeks ago, and it's already developing the penicillin-type mold on the outside, and uh, that's a good thing. You want that mold on the outside because that encourages the proper aging of the meat and uh, protects the meat and also provides uh, actually a lot of flavor uh, for the meat. And so you basically cut that away when you begin to eat it, uh, when you when you go into the meat but um, it's beginning to develop the right kind of mold on it and uh, looking very good and it smells absolutely delicious so again this has got about uh, we're gonna let this um, age probably for about six months uh, before we get into this so there you go that's the start of our prosciutto our venison prosciutto we're gonna keep you updated on the process it's gonna be a year-long process uh, finally ending with our actually tasting it and uh, you guys seeing how that goes. I wish you could be here. I wish you could taste some of these things. They're going to be absolutely unbelievable, I'm sure. But it go, it's cool because we get this goes a long way with allowing us to save our meat without conventional methods, without refrigeration, without chemical preservatives, and without the te technology of what they use for modern packaging. Uh, we want to find the old ways uh, safely to be able to do this. And there's a lot of information out online to do this uh, that, that people will show you and share with you on how to do this properly. So I would encourage you if you want to do this don't just go to one or two websites go to a lot of different websites see how they do it get their perspectives on it um, and just try it you know uh, it, it's something that is, there is something to be said about going out and just trying uh, to preserve your own meats and um, seeing how it turns out it's not always going to be perfect we don't know if all of this is going to be perfect we hope it is um, we gained a lot of knowledge before we made the attempt so i hope you all will do the same so again that's a, the beginning of our prosciutto. We'll keep you updated throughout the process. Thanks again for tuning in. Subscribe if you haven't already, and share this video with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, and other social media websites. All right, we'll see you next time on American Homestead. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please click the thumbs up button below the video. It really means a lot to us. And be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Now you can support an American homestead by becoming a patron. Visit patreon.com slash an American homestead to see all the benefits of becoming a patron of our channel. You'll get access to private videos, pictures, and even live question and answer sessions that you can participate in. 
Some patrons will even receive free gifts throughout the year from the homestead. Visit patreon.com slash an American homestead to check it out and see the rewards of supporting our channel.